What's up guys, welcome to the channel. I think today I'm going to pull the 5.3 S10 build that I'm supposed to start around and we're going to get the S10 hopefully in the garage today. Um, Matt's supposed to come over and pull his out so we can pull mine in. <clears throat> so we got the truck right here. Old square body. I believe it was a six cylinder truck at one time. Manual. Basically, just gonna gut everything out of it. <clears throat> Put some air on the tires. It's been on the trailer for about two years, I think. And now I got this truck right here. It's gonna be the one that's gonna haul it over. I'm gonna have to get the battery charged on it. It's been sitting for a few months now. I don't believe. It's got a little little power in it, but I don't think it's got enough to start. We got moths flying out of it and shit. Check the air in the tires. Hopefully, get it running. Hook it up to the trailer. Pull the trailer around. Unload the bed. Get all the parts out of it. Hopefully, start tearing stuff off the frame and get it ready to start. Start the build. Get the paint cleaned up. I'm not sure what color I want to go with. Uh, I'm gonna have a vote. See who wants to or see what color we choose. <clears throat> so, if you got a, a color idea for the for the 53S10 build, put it down in the comments below. And uh, if you've got a paint code, put the paint code in there. We'll look at it and see what it looks like, and hell, maybe we'll choose that color. But. Uh, I'm gonna get some extension cord ran out to the to the Silverado, get the battery charge in, let it charge for a little bit, get it fired up, and we'll start hooking it up. So, got the Silverado charge in, put the battery charger on it. A little bit more dead than I thought. Got it on 50 amps right now. Emergency engine start. Hopefully it charges fast enough to get this done. I got one of these. It's a smart charger. It will not send power to the leads until it senses voltage off the battery. So if I unhook it, I can touch the leads together and they won't spark or shock or anything like that until it senses voltage from the battery to kick it on and tell it to start charging. Stupidest thing, because if you have a dead battery, it won't charge your car, because it won't sense the voltage from the battery to tell it to kick on and start charging. So I had to mess with it a little bit, got it finally charging. And uh, we'll just wait a second. Let it charge up and hopefully it fires up pretty easy. A little rough in here, but it was a decent truck in all honesty. I mean, has 309,000 miles, still has ice cold AC, heat, power windows, power locks, power steering. Uh, had a radio in it, I just took it out and put it in the Corolla. Speakers weren't the greatest or whatever. Had a tree fall on it, dented the roof down, and now that window won't close, so I had to shove a bag in there. Got water in here, molded in here, and just everything went downhill after that. As soon as that tree landed on it, it just messed the whole truck up. But I only bought the truck for about $900. I drove it for, I drove it as a daily with 300,000 miles, or around 300,000 miles, for a year and a half. So I definitely got my money out of it. I've hauled cars to Knoxville and back to Crossville, which is about uh, like 75 miles, I believe, one way. So I mean, it's done good. It's done more than what I've paid for. But uh, I do want to do a rebuild. I do want to freshen it up. I do want to go through the interior, clean it up, make it a good run and driving truck again. But I got so many projects. Definitely got to start with the race cars first, I think. I think they're they're more on the priority list. But hopefully this thing starts. I wonder if it's track now. Let's see what happens. Nope, still too low. So we'll wait a little longer and wait for charge up. Good morning. So it's a new day. Uh had to let the battery charge overnight. Once it was fully charged, I went to go start it. And uh, 
figured out that I had no gas. So went today, put gas in it, cranked it over for maybe two seconds, a couple revolutions, and fired right up. Been purring ever since, letting it warm up. Everything's doing good. Like I said, it's a really good truck. It's beat up, it's old, it's got a lot of miles. But it has never failed me. So, right now I think I'm gonna pull it around. I was planning on pulling my S10 in, starting to do the tear down on it, getting ready for the build and everything. But I do remember that the transmission in this, um, I don't know if it's a 4L60 or 4L80E, but it's electronic shift. And the plug that plugged in the side of it, somehow an animal, a person, something reached up and under there, got up and under there, and pulled out the electrical connector that connects in the side of the transmission and also unplugged the speedo sensor. So I got the speedo sensor working. I put fluid in it because I thought it wasn't shifting because there was no fluid, but fluid started pouring out of the electrical connector. And then I figured out that the plug was unplugged, but fluid shouldn't be pouring out of the electrical connector when it's not unplugged or when it's not plugged in. So I'm gonna hopefully drop the pan today if Matt comes over and moves his truck and start looking at what I need to do to get this thing to start shifting properly. Cause right now it just stays in third gear, I believe. So hopefully we'll work on that today, get this thing going pretty good. And then we'll pull the S10 in and start tearing down on it. And uh, I'll show you what I got for it. Smooth ride or what? Not at all. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> 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 I wish I could take it on the road though. I want to like actually get it wide open. I felt like I was drifting a little bit. Might have been. How fast does that go? Uh, with this engine, I think it'll only go like 25. 
Mm. Still pretty quick for a half horse Briggs. Once I get like the actual racing engine that I want to get for it, it should go like 65. Straight open exhaust. Yeah, I've got I've got an actual pipe to go up the back, but it cracked, so I welded it up. I just I don't have a, a, a gasket to put it back together. But hopefully we'll get to run it this year. I don't know if the kids will drive it, but I definitely want to take it. Oh yeah. Down the track. That'd be fun. I like to start it every once in a while just because it's not good for it to sit there with methanol in the tank. Well, we got the truck in the garage. We ended up having to move a stuff, move a bunch of stuff around, swept the garage out, just to get this beast of unit in here. Chris has already looked under it. What you what you find under there? Uh, it looked like the plug-in for the transmission. I guess that controls all the shifting, being it's electronic shift. Yeah. Uh, I guess the pins just got pushed in somehow when I plugged it in. So I pulled all the pins out. They all went clip. I lined it up, slid it on, didn't force it or anything like that. It went on smooth. The plug clip, so now I guess we're gonna take it down the road and see if it actually shifts through the gears like it's supposed to. All right, sweet. Definitely feels better, but let's see if it shifts. Well, that sounds like it's in first. Clean square body over there. Uh, looks like it might be 350 swamped. Oh. Yeah, it's definitely in like. It's got to be in like third or something. Looks like it's going transmission back in pull all the pins out didn't really work so we double checked for some fuses to see if there was a fuse that could be popping causing it to not want to shift after we got all the pins pulled out and we did find a transmission fuse that was blown so we pulled a spare one out of my s10 in the back it's gonna soon be the, the race truck and uh, it popped it as soon as we turned the key on so we're thinking that the transmission fluid inside the connector is shorting them out get it all clean and dried out, pack some dielectric grease in it, and then try again and 
Hopefully it quits blowing fuses. What's up guys? So we got the S10 back in here, worked on the 2500. Uh, we ended up spraying a bunch of carb cleaner, brake cleaner, getting all the fluid out, all transmission fluid. Um, blowed it out with air, got it all dry, shot a crap ton of dielectric grease in there to protect it from any more fluid or water or anything like that. Found out the fuse was bad. Um, not sure exactly what's going on, but we had to jump up to a 30 amp fuse, so obviously there's probably something throwing the wrong resistance or a short. I don't think it's a short because if it was short it would have popped a 32, but something's not happy. But we put a 30 amp in it, it shifts like it should now. Um, it's just a toy truck, so I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to dig more into it or not, but... We're going to go ahead and end it here and uh, see you guys on the next one.